Ooh, all right, all right. 65-24, the Tennessee Volunteers roll their way to a win over the UT Martin Skyhawks. Not much in that second half. Uh, a lot of backup players. UT Martin, to their credit, scored 17 points. So, hey, good for them. Uh, on on a you know Tennessee's second third string players nonetheless uh, so hey that's uh, what happened in that second half we'll discuss it sort of briefly and then really get to I mean what people are really going to want to hear yeah. about here Kentucky on the horizon Georgia on the horizon the college football playoff discussion on the horizon we're going to talk about it all here in the post game show but before we do that. I got to tell you about our amazing sponsors, Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans is a corporate sponsor of the Vols. They've been saving, serving Tennesseans for 75 years. Plan on us for health, dental, and vision at fbhp.com slash ATOZ and Omaha Steaks. OmahaSteaks.com and uh, type in, go to OmahaSteaks.com and type promo code Vols at checkout to fill your freezer with enough gourmet food to keep your cookouts going strong into the fall and rattle and snap Tennessee whiskey from Logstill Distillery. Make your own luck, just like Tennessee's fast-paced Rattle and Snap offense with Rattle and Snap, Tennessee Whiskey. Tennessee 65, UT Martin 24. I am Charlie Burris. That is Jonathan Crompton, uh, former Vols quarterback. What did you see in that second half, uh, if anything, of, of note there, Crump? Kind of what we expected, except for way too many... Uh... Reviews, clock stoppages. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> dude, I was in here going. Uh, the three thirty games have started, and the noon game still like ten minutes left. Oh Ugh. crap! You know, um, but no. In all seriousness, we we saw what we kind of thought we were gonna still kind of do our stuff, but not really. Shouldn't say this way. Not really care if we score, but just let's get some experience with our twos, and you know, try to get some threes in there. So really, typical second half of a blowout. So I think, thankfully, there, there was no notable injuries uh, or, or anything like that. You did see Elijah Simmons go down in that second half. That's not great, but he is a depth piece. Yep. Um, and then T Taven Jackson, that looked like a broken collarbone, but he's your third string quarterback. It doesn't look like it happened, but let's call a spade a spade. If we're going, to, if we, if if he's in the game in a meaningful moment right now, like actually having to throw the ball, not the Clemson, we're just going to change you to hand the ball off. Yeah. Um, scenario, then any team that is down that low on the depth chart at this moment is not a good look. So hopefully he's okay. I, I hope so. Uh, I, we'll you see. never know. Yeah. All, uh, Mil Milton is a snap away from being the guy, yep. and David Jackson is two snaps away from being the guy. So, yeah. you know, uh, you, you want to keep everybody healthy. And for the most part, I think you probably – did for the most important pieces you hopefully i think the big thing here going into kentucky is you want to get uh J jalen mccullough back who he's wrapped up in legal proceedings so you don't really know exactly where that's going yeah you you want to get that. uh you want to get haddon back you want to get uh who who else was out christian charles was out there you want to get all of those dudes on defense because you saw there i mean even ut martin was kind of uh, not chopping yeah. them up, but but they were able to throw the ball on them. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah. it is what it is. And, and, and we kind of expected that, but also it's one of those that it's the old cliche mop-up duty, right? So when that happens, it doesn't really matter the level you're playing at. You're pl you're playing so soft as it's at the secondary level. You're giving them 10 and under. You're giving them the speed outs. You're giving them the curl routes. You're giving them the hitches, the slants, the smoke routes, as I call them, which is fine. Um, more so what you really like to see at that point is catch tackle. Make sure our guys are making the open field tackles. You can tackle in space. You're not getting juked and burnt down the sideline, which we did have one of those. Um, but that that's kind of where what I was at least wanting to see. And I saw a decent amount of it, not as much as I would have liked, but, you know, decent enough. Well, let's let's go ahead and get to it. Unless you had other stuff from from that second half, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. Come on, uh, Kentucky's on the horizon here, and and that's what yes. the bulk of this discussion is going to be here in this post game. We're going to cover that and what it means going forward. I believe in between the Kentucky and Georgia game will be the college football playoff rankings, the initial ones. Um, yep. 
and uh, we're going to talk about all of that. So here's here's what I got to ask for this first uh, this initial segment of the show. Everybody that is watching, got a, like a hundred ish people in here right now. Drop into the comments. Seven games in, Tennessee is seven and zero. You got Kentucky on the horizon. College football playoff implications now in play in a very real way. How are you feeling? And make it one word. One word for how you are feeling uh, about Tennessee's position in the college football world at the moment. You just whipped up UT Martin, Kentucky coming in to Neyland Stadium for a blackout game. Uh, and and we'll give our, our one word for how uh, we're feeling. But just drop that into the comments. Uh, and uh, before we do that, I'll tell you about the great folks at Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plan has been serving Tennesseans for over 75 years. Much has changed in Tennessee over the years, but some has stayed the same. Farm Bureau Health Plans has always valued personal relationships, especially when it comes to good health and good service. Plan on Farm Bureau Health Plans for health, dental, and vision. For better coverage, better rates, and better service, go to fbhp.com slash ATOZ or walk into one of their 200-plus locations across the state of Tennessee. That is fbhp.com slash ATOZ. Farm Bureau. Health plans. Um, got a few responses here. It's not uh, the crowd is not as enthusiastic as last week, Crump. I, why is that? I, what happened last week compared to this week? This is a good game. Tennessee well, won. no, it was, it was a good game, but it's man. Let's <laughs> just call it what it is. These games are these games are one that the like hardcore super fans are the ones that will watch the whole game. Yeah, you're gonna, like you're gonna watch the first half, and then you're gonna do what a lot of people are gonna do, and there's nothing wrong with it. Well, let's see, let's flip this one. Oh, let's flip that one. Oh, let's flip that one, right? Because that's you're up forty points at halftime. It's not fun to watch. So I understand exactly. Um, but we, that, we that's kind of where that's kind of where it's at now. If this SEC play, you know as well as I do, man, it's it's a totally different feel. Yeah, we'll we'll be having a a plenty big show. Next week, but uh, some of the responses here for one word for how you're feeling. Seven games in, Kentucky coming up. Mark says undefeated. Derek says unbeatable. Glenn says optimistic. This is three words, but I like it. Jordan says Kentucky is trash. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and uh, and then we have back also. So plenty to talk about going forward, even if today was a little uneventful on the whole. Because this is a game that everybody in national media is completely overlooking. I mean, Kentucky, like every everybody that I've talked to that's not a Tennessee fan, they've been like, well, how about that Georgia game? And I kind of go, uh, how about this Kentucky game? Because yeah. they're, they are no, they're not a team that you just want to shrug off. Now, they're not no. as good as Tennessee, and I, I fully believe that. Um, that does, dude, that doesn't, on Saturdays, that doesn't matter. Um, exactly. That's, that's, Kentucky, that's not the way that you want the team looking at it. Yeah, exactly. In Kentucky's minds, they are overlooked. They hear the national media say, oh, Tennessee, Georgia. Oh, Tennessee, Georgia. Tennessee's going down to Athens, blah, blah, blah. They hear that, and they know we play them next week. And they were off this week. That element concerns so, me. So, so what I'm getting at is all they're hearing is Tennessee, Georgia. Tennessee, Georgia. They're not hearing Tennessee, Kentucky. Kentucky's got to go to Knoxville, right? So they're still a top 20 team. This is still a top 25 matchup in Knoxville next week. So and depending here, on how the rest of the day shapes up, they might mess around to be back in the top 15, depending on if there's any upsets. What makes me feel good about it, I, th I think them, them coming off a bye week is concerning. They're going to be fresh. But, of course, you, for the we bulk came, of this game, you didn't really we, play your starter. So came I came off of a spring game. Exactly. I think Tennessee is almost in a, in a coming off a of bye week situation here yeah. in some sense. So that's not huge to me. A, a big difference maker here is game is inside Neyland Stadium. It is a night game. Uh, and it's be rocking. probably going to be a blackout game. It's already sold out. Oh, it's, uh, and that place going to be rocking. Yeah, gonna I mean, be... it, it's going to be nutty yeah. Uh, yeah. in there. And so I'm uh, pretty excited about it. Nervous because obviously every game from here on out, if you want to make the college football playoff, is a must win. So Kentucky yeah. falls right oh, yeah. in that category. Yes. Uh, but your your initial thoughts after what we've seen through seven games, Crump. Oh well, and uh, let's let's start out with the the one word for how you're feeling about this situation. What was yours um, 
for for what we're looking at right now, Tennessee. As far as the season goes, or for the college football playoff? Well, I, for for the season, just your your one word. Oh, season. For the one word was um, predicted. Pre That's true. Board. That was you. You I mean, called it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You were the one that called it. I was, I was trying to think how to get that into one word, and I had to put the. I, then we're going to go quotes at the end. It's not really a part. It's not really part of the word though. It's a period. <laughs> Dot dot dot, you know. I, um, I even I even talked about you on the on Big Orange podcast this past uh week where I said we we were kind of like, oh, we both said eight, eight and four, nine and three this season, and freaking Crompton, man. He called it, he called it before the season started. You I think you gotta, literally said eleven to one. You gotta finish to make me look like I know what I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh but uh I I think mine mine will probably be ready i okay. i am obviously for people to watch this show regularly you know that i i am a cautiously optimistic cynical kind of tennessee fan i'm ready for the back half of the season i'm ready to go ready to see it ready to see what this team can do to close out because you've you've made your your path it's right there to the college football playoff you you can be a championship contending team go take it I'm ready oh, to see. Are, are you? Did you really just say cautiously optimistic? That's the best I can do for you. That's <laughs> that's the kindest way that I can say. Do, uh, do we need? Do hold on. Do we need to bring in the? Do we need to bring in the comments to see? If we, <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. On a scale of one to ten, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, well, oh, and this, this is true. I I got to give Mark Jones credit here too he said 12 and 0 at the beginning of the season i think we kind of shrugged him off he he watches basically everything we do here and shout out yeah. to mark um he did say 12 and 0 so he's even more yes. oh wait hold on is jeff optimistic. in here jeff i don't think right he is somewhere. i haven't seen him okay well he'll eventually watch this so he said oh you gave him a touchdown and y'all gave him a first down to iowa <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. iowa's off i've been holding i've been is. holding on to that one since halftime i've been holding on to say y'all gave him a first down it's okay, man. All right, sorry. Back, back to back to the subject. All right, so we we're both feeling good about this second half. I think again, you're the better team than Kentucky. Yes, but to, gotta prove it now. To exactly, you just gotta go out and do it. And this game comes down to to me scoring points, but also stopping Chris Rodriguez, also getting to Will Levis because I. What it feels like to me is going to happen, specifically because it's a home game. I might feel differently if it was a road game. But it feels like to me, Tennessee will probably get out to like a 14-point lead at some point. And I, I, if, if it goes above that, that'd be nice. But it's just that's what happened last year. Tennessee, for a good chunk of that second half, had like a 10-ish point lead. And they had they struggled holding on to it. They eventually made the, the stop and closed out the game. But I think in this one, Tennessee's defense, especially defensive line, is better than it was a year ago. I think Kentucky's We're offense is not as good as it was a year ago. Um, but your your thoughts there? No, I, I totally agree. Like I said, team-wise, we're better all just all around. It's another year in the system, offensively and defensively. We're playing more um, aggressive, I would say, even though last year I was like, oh, we're going fast. But if you look at what we're doing this year, we take more – chances in you know non-typical advantageous situations because they the coaching staff trust our players to you know make them right so i mean i, I really i really think that kentucky secondary is not as good as our receivers that's just that's fine i'm i'm good with that what i'm most concerned about is kentucky doing what if i were them i would do I'm going to play a four minute offense my, every time I got the ball. Cause that's now Georgia, eh, you know, Missouri's not built that way. You know, something Kentucky's built that way. Kentucky can get into three tight ends, say we're going to go and snap the ball at 37 seconds every time and just try to bleed the clock to make it the old cliche. It's not time of possession, it's points per possession to make us almost have to be perfect offensively to beat them. That's what I would do if I were Kentucky because they're built I, that way. Any other team would play their series not built that way, but that's what Kentucky's under center two and three tight ends. Sometimes run heavy, run heavy, run heavy. That's what the hell I would do. 
So I feel, I, I completely agree. I do feel better after that Alabama game because of how well the defensive line in particular stood up yes. against easily the best running back you're going to see all season. I mean, Jameer Gibbs. Yes, totally but great. also, but realize they did not run sets that Kentucky That's gonna true. Run. Kentucky's going to run three tight ends, double tight with a wing, and say, you know where we're running it. You better stop me. Yeah, come and stop. That, me. So we've, you know, now we got to have a big personnel defensively, stuff like that. So this week's definitely a challenge. It was smart slash lucky at the same time that we got UT Martin before, because you know these schedules are made a little in advance. That we kind of drew them before Kentucky with our team being as good as we are. Um, I do think that we can get in the head of Rodriguez as their tailback. I do think he, and I could be wrong, but I feel like he is. If he's not, if things aren't rolling, I feel like he can start getting a little chirpy. Yeah, right? maybe, I mean, if, this, if, he does, if he does that, we're, then then we're we're really good. This guy right here says that the best running back is Chris Rodriguez. No, he's not. Jameer Gibbs. Well, no, 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 no. But now, he's Chris Rodriguez is good. He's good. No, no, Rodriguez is the Rodriguez is the uh, going to be the best power. I I can only I'm downhill runner. Yeah, I would agree with Gibbs that. Gibbs is the best overall pure football. Running back, we're gonna yeah. play. Rodriguez, like, like no, no, Rodriguez, I'm not. He's good. That's not. What I'm yeah, he's good. Oh yeah. But I, you get him in space as far as shiftiness on swing routes and screens. Gibbs is better because Gibbs's feet are a lot better. Get Gibbs. You're having to look out for for more. He's he's an Alvin Kamara of sorts. He got. Yes. I mean, they even compared him to that on yes. the CBS broadcast last week. Um, but hey, Rodriguez is not a slouch. There's a reason why he's second in Kentucky and and uh, behind yeah. uh, what was the dude? Um, Shoot, I can't remember the guy's name right now off the top of my head. Um, in total touchdowns, like dude can play. It's not what I'm getting at. Um, Dustin, man, I, I'm with you. 194 yards and two uh, two TDs against Mississippi State. I'm not arguing that. I'm a Benny Snell. Thank you, by the way. Um, I'm just saying, as far as he's a downhill runner, yes, he's not the guy that you're going to be concerned about as much in the pass game. And in the out in space shiftiness and then burst by you like Gibbs was. Gibbs is literally the all around Alva Kamar, old school Reggie Bush type bat. Yeah, Gibbs is Gibbs is the superior athlete. I think is how you could say it. Where Rodriguez is, Rodriguez is running, running back. Gibbs is listed as an athlete. Yeah, but beyond yeah, I'm, that, I'm not, gonna, hey, I'm not gonna complain with either one of them on my team. <laughs> yeah, I, we could use either of those dudes, right? I, I, I would think either one of them would be perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, but mo moving beyond that, um, this this game is still just going to come down to what Tennessee does best: score, 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 oh, yeah. score, 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 score. That's like what, that. That's what that's every game is going to come down to. Yeah, you, and don't don't turn the ball over. You know, play play clean football. Yep. And and I think there there is. Uh, a, a real scenario where this probably stays close through the third quarter ish. I I could see I could see this going like the Florida game, except not ending where you almost blow it right there at the end. Where it's like they keep they keep it close, they're they're pesky, but then by the middle of the fourth quarter, you have a seventeen point lead. That to me, that feels like the most likely thing to happen here because just eventually. Tennessee, with this, I mean, it is it is the best offense in America, despite what Jeff thinks. And it, well, statistically speaking, it is. It, I mean, statistically, it's, yeah, it's not even debatable. It's statistically speaking, I mean, it's the best offense in America. So you know, yeah. do it that way you will. And you, you just scored sixty five points in a game, like. Yeah. Uh, but that's that feels like the most likely thing to me. And what what I look at is what could go wrong. Well, Chris Chris Rodriguez runs all over you. Will Levis throws the ball all over. Like if if they're if they're throwing the ball a lot, trying to come from behind, and he somehow is having a miracle game through the air. Fine. fine. Totally but and that's where Justin comes back and says we can't overlook. That's what we're that's what we're saying. We're agreeing with you, Dustin. We yeah. Tennessee cannot overlook Kentucky. Kentucky's a good football team. Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying they're the number one team in the country. But Kentucky's a good football team, and Kentucky, Tennessee always play each other well. Regardless of the 30-something year in a row streak back in the day, blah, 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 blah. That means nothing, right? Dude, they're a good football team. They can run the ball. That's what I'm, That's what we're trying to say is if we overlook them, they will beat us. 
but I think our staff is good enough to not let the team overlook. Uh, th- I think the the factors that come in here where it just pushes Tennessee over the top to me is you getting Tillman back reportedly, reportedly getting Tillman back in that game. You're already seeing the phenomenal play that you're getting from the guys that were supposedly not even as good as Tillman. <laughs> you know, he was your number one right wide receiver, and now you have you found out that one of the guys that's not Tillman is also one of the best wide receivers in America. So yeah, I like, you're just adding to the arsenal there. Uh, but I mean, completely, you cannot overlook this. You got to bring it. And Hypel has been very good, not overlooking games. He, he has been a guy that gets his team to focus and be yep. ready. He, he exactly. has not had a game in his time at Tennessee so far where I've looked and been like, whoa we are completely unprepared here i don't even know yeah. what's going on Th- that has not happened yet and it better not start like, against kentucky few times last year we said hey we're just outgunned at the end because of yes you know, being outmanned with with depth but not unprepared no yes um but it's still to me obviously i i will give my personal prediction uh on the big orange podcast on monday 4 p.m we will live stream right here wherever you may be watching this um, me and me and Zach Reagan will live stream here. I'm actually going to eat dinner with Zach right after this. Uh, nice. But um, I'll give my prediction then. Uh, I can say I pretty much have a policy that's like Tennessee is not going to lose to Kentucky until they do. You've beaten them 37 out of the last 40 years is what it is. But I'll give my actual you know exact prediction here. I'll go to you, Crump, here. Before we – I want to finish with this uh, – college football playoff discussion, some interesting stuff that was yeah. discussed on college game day this morning, but your, your prediction for this Kentucky game, how are you feeling? Oh, I mean, I'm feeling good about it. Like all year, I've, I, you know, I've predicted this as a win. Um, I definitely think we do win. I don't, I'm not going to say that we run away with it, but I, I say it's a, it, you know, roughly seven to 10 point margin. Yeah. I, I feel good about that. Well, I got, a, I got a critic. I got a critic in the, uh, the comments here usually look at this. He says Burris is so terrible. Hey Keith, screw you. I don't care what you think. So, all right. <laughs> um, sorry, just so nonchalant. I love it. <laughs> That's it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't. Right, I wouldn't. Next, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I cared what Keith thought. I mean, this. I've had plenty I, of people. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Here, here's the thing, Keith. More people are watching my show right now than have ever watched it before, and it doesn't matter if you watch or not. So. Eh. All right, so uh, we do have to talk. Before we get into the CFB playoff discussion, um, we do have to hit our segment for uh, the stat of the day for Rattle and Snap Tennessee Whiskey. And I'll tell everybody about Rattle and Snap uh, Whiskey. Obviously, it is getting colder each week. And what goes better with a beautiful, crispy fall night than Tennessee Whiskey? Uh, Logstill Distillery is releasing a new Tennessee whiskey product line, Rattle and Snap Tennessee Whiskey, named after a long-forgotten game of chance. Make sure you go over and follow them on Instagram, at Rattle and Snap Whiskey there. Uh, It's available in Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, and Mississippi. There is a four-year version and an eight-year version. Me and Kromp uh, have both bottles, and they are excellent. And uh, go grab it at your nearest liquor store. I've seen it all around knoxville at multiple places and uh i know it's in nashville too so go get it there rattle and snap whiskey now looking through the stats from today i just like my my favorite stat of the game to me personally was that hinden hooker went for 276 yards three touchdowns 18 of 24 and he played for less than two whole quarters oh, it, wasn't even two quarters. it was like a quarter Perfect. and three quarters that that's that's the perfect thing that you needed in this game, so that it didn't end up like uh, Akron, where guys are getting injured and all of this garbage. You you got in, you totally. got out. It's over. See you later. Totally bye. Agree. This was perfect. Move on to Kentucky. That was sort of my stat for the game. Totally agree. Mine. Um, I'm, I wonder if people will agree with me. I'm looking also towards the future. See if somebody can name this player. Five receptions, 122, and a touchdown. Squirrel. White. Ooh, that, that's a that great was, That's impressive to me because 
it just shows that obviously we understand the opponent, but that that shows that they're you know they're willing to put you in there and throw you the ball. Right? If he doesn't, if his shoe doesn't pop off after that big play, Hyatt didn't go back in. He may get some more. Right? Um, so I really like that one a lot. I really do. I, I think he's going to be really good in the future. I think we might start utilizing him more in the next couple of weeks. I hope so. The, it, with some shiftiness, maybe get some packages in there, hopefully. So um, that that's mine because I, I, I think he's going to be a hell of a player for us down the road. Yeah, man. He. I love – if you can get him in in sweep situations, yeah. trying trying to hit that corner man, he that speed is yeah. just crazy. Uh, I I love it. I hope they get him more involved because that that would be I an do. awesome wrinkle, like sort of how they've been using Prince and Fan in that fullback thing. Let's get Squirrel on some sweeps, and I'm, I wouldn't be mad at it. Get I don't that think man many people would be. So there's our our stats for the game. Shout out to Rattle and Snap Whiskey. This. This is the bottle of rattle and snap whiskey that we usually in like after the Alabama game, uh, we we took uh, we took pulls of. Um, we, it's too we early had, in the afternoon right now. It's four o'clock. Like it's I said, I gotta o'clock. go drive. I'd feel pretty bad about my life if I was doing that. I gotta go drive to dinner with Zach after this, so I, I can't be taking pulls of whiskey. Yeah, but no, that's I, would, I might judge myself. <laughs> but we, if we wanted to, we could be having whiskey for the win, and we will be having whiskey for the win later tonight um all right so the the last thing i wanted to talk about on the the post game show here is this discussion that was had on uh on college game day this morning they were talking about what happens if you have a a mini teams with one loss scenario so if, if Tennessee has one loss, who gets in at that point with the way that the season in? If Georgia, if Tennessee beats Georgia, who's getting in? Blah, 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 blah. And what I pulled away from it was that essentially these guys are thinking, and I think they're a decent reflection of probably what the playoff committee would be thinking, is basically that Tennessee, if they have one loss, is going to get screwed. screwed. Well, today, um, today solidified that. Today yeah. solidified that. Um, <sighs> I'm 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 watching the Ole Miss LSU game is, and I'll say why I'm doing that also. Okay, Clemson winning today, which was they were they the better team? Not a chance in hell. Sure. They were atrocious, and they just have more depth. Okay, they've got Notre Dame, Louisville, Miami, South Carolina. Well, t- that that right there tells you right now Clemson's going twelve and zero. Okay, so Clemson going twelve and zero, they'll get in because the ACC is garbage. They have no depth, it's just what it is. Okay, so just because of that, Clemson's in. Ohio State or Michigan, whoever, wh- as long as one, whoever wins that game, as long as they don't lose the Big Ten championship, is in. Okay, at this point, and this is where I'm saying I'm watching that game. Earlier, I was like, oh, I would really love to see Ole Miss win because I want to see a Tennessee Ole Miss. We need LSU to win. We need LSU to win. We don't need Ole Miss in the in the in Atlanta, in my opinion. And here's why: there's a, it, it, you got to stay with me here. If Georgia, if we if we went out like we think, but Georgia beats us, and we're eleven and one, and Georgia goes to Atlanta, if Ole Miss is in Atlanta, that means they've went undefeated. If Ole Miss loses, Ole Miss is still in the playoff. Yeah. See what I'm going with? So we need Ole Miss not to go to Atlanta now. The only way I think we get in because of Clemson, because of the national media, all that BS, we got to go to Atlanta. And if we go to Atlanta, that means we've won out. Win or lose, you're in. Win or lose, you're in. Just like it's happened before. If there's an SEC team undefeated in Atlanta, win or lose, you're in the playoff. Yeah, because I I definitely thought initially, like running it around in my head, I was like, well – if we lose to Georgia and Georgia goes to the title game and then wins, Alabama will be eliminated. They're two loss Alabama. Yes. A two a two loss team has never made the playoff. No, no, I totally agree. Or uh, the, the hardest part is I don't think Georgia beats Alabama because of the history, the history of how many assistant coaches, former assistant coaches have beaten Saban. Yeah. I mean, it's happened what twice? 
Yeah, and and you see what it took for Tennessee to beat them. You see what it took for Georgia to beat them in the national championship game last year. I mean, Saban comes correct for those games. That, that's my only thing. I don't. I wouldn't want to hang our hat on that. But I do think you're correct. If we lost and Georgia was there undefeated, if Georgia beats a one loss team, if Ole Miss is there and Georgia's there, we're screwed. We're done. It's yeah. Ole Miss and Georgia both going to get in. In, unless unless that one loss team is is Ole Miss, which could happen. I mean, they lose to Alabama, they lose. If they lose, if they can't get in. If they lose to Alabama, Alabama's in. Unless Alabama slips up somewhere else. Well, it's, oh, sorry. I mean, if if they beat Alabama and then lose to somebody else, is what I meant to say. Um, they would still make it to Atlanta, but they yeah. would be they would be susceptible Very, to getting dropped out of the playoff picture. Um, yeah. No. But, the, but what the problem on is, I was I was very two weeks ago. I was like, if we're eleven one, we're in. Now yeah. it's one of those that, to me, we got to make it to Atlanta. The only way we make it to Atlanta is be twelve and zero. I uh, I mean I I think a pretty a pretty consequential couple of consequential games today that weigh into this. If that is the scenario, I mean I I, th- I think at this point eleven one with a loss to Georgia is the most likely scenario. And then obviously, yeah, beat beat Georgia, and make it to the SEC title game. That's the ideal thing. I mean, we all know that. Obviously, it, well, that's if, you, all like, if there's a, if like, there's an undefeated SEC team in Atlanta. They're in regardless of they win or lose. Exactly. That's just what it is. If they yeah. they you can be you can go twelve and one and be the number four team in the country and be in Atlanta at twelve and zero and lose and you're still going to get in. Yeah, and they're and, not going to let somebody jump. Well, Dan, Danny says kind of what I'm thinking here. So you guys are forgetting what if TCU is undefeated and wins the Big Twelve? That's what I was about to say. So the, a few consequential TCU, games. TCU one is happening. TCU right now, U- UCLA, Oregon, UCLA is undefeated, tied with Oregon 10-10 in the second, and then TCU is playing Kansas State. Really big game. It's one of the toughest games left on their schedule. TCU could go undefeated and make it in. I mean, that's I, – I, I don't see that one happening, I and I don't – this is no slight, but if it's – one, I don't see TCU going undefeated. I don't. All Everything that I'm saying is UCLA ends up losing a game. TCU loses a game. That means Pac-12, Big 12 are done. Yeah. If Clemson, for some reason, and it's gonna hurt me to say this, but by God, let's go Fighting Irish next week. <laughs> I don't. I Please. hate. Do Notre us Dame. all a favor. I just Please. don't like Notre Dame, right? But if Clemson loses the game, ACC is done. That and that should tell you kind of the only two conferences that have a, that ever have a chance of getting two in are the SEC and the Big Ten. You know what I mean? Like it could. There, there is a scenario. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. But if, say, Clemson slips up, now hear me out. Clemson slips up in the ACC championship game and they lose the ACC championship. Okay. They, I do not think they make it over a non Atlanta attending SEC one loss team because of resumes, resumes only. But what I'm getting at, that means SEC championship, SEC champion in, Big Ten champion in. But what if, what if, say it's Ohio State that wins the Big Ten? What if Clint or I mean uh, Michigan's only loss to Ohio State and Clemson loses and the Pac-12 Big 12 are out? You could you there is a likely scenario that you have Ohio State, Michigan, and two SEC. I'm just throwing it. This year is the yeah. this is why they need to expand to 12 because this year could be for everybody that remembers sports back in the early 2000s. I hate to say it. Tennessee could be the what 2003 Auburn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that got left out of the BCS. Yeah, where and they, LSU won by was default, it, was sort it of. 03? It was either 03 or 04. And they deserve it. They were deserving of being there and they got left out. It was, it was tu- Tuberville, right? That year's Auburn. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I mean, that, like, who, who at this point would not want to see some of the matchups that would fall? into those games with teams that would be ranked four and, a, and above. I mean, you, you're potentially talking like a Tennessee Clemson. I think Tennessee fans and Clemson fans would love to see that, or at least Tennessee fans would. I know that much. Um, and and some think TCU is... Clemson, a, well, Clemson's offense is atrocious. That That's true. I mean, I, I think at this point, yeah. Tennessee on a neutral field against Clemson, Tennessee would be like a 10-point favorite right now. Uh, Clemson's and, sad on offense, yeah, man. And I'm not saying this because obviously because I'm Tennessee. Watching Clemson's offense and how very, very subpar and very predictable and very run heavy because they can't throw the ball to save their damn life. 
Um, <laughs> their secondary is not going to hold up to what we do, and their defensive line, will, their defensive line, is big and nasty. But by God, they they ain't go, they're going to tap out, and they can't tap out if we don't sub. We legit might beat Clemson by twenty one points. Yeah, I mean, just look. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's the better. That we're that much better of a team. I'm talking about schematics. Their offense is atrocious. Uh, Alabama's defensive line was pretty powerful. I mean, it's considered one of the best defensive lines in America. They didn't touch Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, they, they just with the way that Hypo coaches his team. So well, I want to touch on easy. this. I want to touch on this comment. Danny said, "I'm not saying it is going to be a two and two. I'm just saying there is a conversation that can be had because remember the playoff is supposed to be the best four teams, not necessarily." The, the most for light or the best whatever or the conference champions, it's the best four teams. Well, if the Big 12 is worse than the Big 10, a, non, a non-conference playing Big 10 team that's better than the Big 12 champion team should get in. That's what I'm getting at. That's why they need – that's why we got to go to 12. I'm, yeah. I promise you, I'm with you. They will not go to Big 10, to SEC. I'm just saying the conversation at the end of the year, there's a likely conversation that that, that could be had – for that to be a case because of remember the definition is the best four teams and the ACC is weak. The big 12 stupidly weak and the PAC 12 is weak. That's what I, that's, that's all I mean by that. So, I mean, no, you're right. They're not going to go two and two, but the conversation needs to be had about the best four teams. I completely agree. There's a lot of scenarios that concern me. Bottom line, just beat Georgia. And just as if that's like some easy feat to do. Uh, it's it's going to be really tough. I mean, it's, it's just particularly annoying. This entire scenario and talking about this annoys me because you look and, you know, Ohio State beats their chest and, and they're, they're good. It's a good team. Tennessee, in years past would go like 11 and one with Ohio state schedule. They would have had an 11 win season with Butch Jones. Probably if they had Ohio state schedule, well, like I'm it's pull, I'm and Cle- up Ohio state schedule right now. Yeah. I mean, and, and Clemson's schedule this year. I mean, oh, no. well, the, a- break, the ACC dude. in general is just weak though. That's yeah. the thing. Like, give me a break. T- Tennessee will end up playing by, by the, when they get through the Georgia game. Cause I think that'll be the last ranked game of the season for Tennessee. Tennessee will have played six ranked teams including two top five teams in mm-hmm. in eight games i yes. like come but, on and that's but that's where i'm going it should be the best four teams so like if you look at ohio state the notre dame win is looking less and less impressive okay arkansas state toledo well wisconsin fired their coach because they sucked rutgers michigan state they're really bad iowa everybody literally makes fun of them getting a first down then, so the only games on their schedule that you go, hey, these are games are Penn State and then Michigan to end it. Because then you got – That's it. You got Northwestern, Indiana, and Maryland in between. Ohio State's schedule is – But th- this, is where, this is where I go. This is where it proves my argument of conference championship games are null and void now. Yeah. Because Ohio State's going to have the easiest road of Power Five – to get to Indianapolis, their conference championship location, right? They've only got to play two legitimate opponents. Two, Penn State and Michigan, like legitimate opponents. Everybody thought Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame is looking less and less and less and less impressive to begin the year, right? So two out of, two out of 12 that are games, Toledo, no. Arkansas State, no, both are spring games, right? Rutgers, a spring game. Wisconsin, the what before the airbird was like, yeah, nope, that turned out to be a spring game. So what I'm getting at is like Northwestern, Indiana, Maryland are all very, very, very subpar. That's where I go back to conference championship games now are so irrelevant. So irrelevant because SEC is going to play the hardest week in, week out. If you get that bad draw like we've gotten, as far as six out of eight teams in a row are going to be ranked. Right and pretty damn good teams. Um, like I'm sorry, I'm saying it's about to be 17-10. LSU, LSU or LSU's coming back. They're down 17-10. LSU is not as bad as I said they were a few weeks ago because they're still five and two. 
That that win in Florida was impressive. I I watched the second half of that game. But that's that's what I'm getting. It's like it, the the resume to get there is what matters. That's where conference championship games don't mean a damn thing anymore. This isn't yeah. the BCS era. It's not just to go to the national championship game. Well, and, now it's to the playoff, and the, they've proven they've proven that they'll take teams that aren't in, or if they lose the championship game. So why even have them? And you and you know what else screws us here is that. The uh, the way, not even just the divisions of the SEC. The divisions of the SEC inherently are not dumb. It's a good way to schedule, I think, and it simplifies things a little bit. But what is dumb is that you don't just have the two best teams in the league playing in the championship. You have the best in the East, best in the West. And what's that, what that's created in years past is that Alabama goes in and just beats the doors off of whoever they play in the East. And then now it's kind of switched to, you know, Georgia and Alabama are at least formidable and that's something, but it, it should just be if the two best teams are Georgia and Alabama, they play, but if the two best teams are Georgia and Tennessee, let Georgia well, they, and Tennessee play again, which yeah, is well, probably what's going to end up happening this season. Well, the ACC is going to that. Is it next year or the year after? I can't remember. I think well, the, the Big Ten's doing it as well. If I'm not the conversation's mistaken. being had, yeah. No, no, the ACC. The, if I'm not mistaken, ACC and Big Ten have already announced they're doing away oh, wow. with them. It's either a year or two, and they're Good. going top Lucky two teams them. go. I know the ACC has already said it, but I'm I'm pretty sure the Big Ten may have said it as well. Um, no, but you're right. It should be the two best teams um, because in years past it has been Alabama and Auburn. Because it, it it just should have – exactly. It should have been Alabama and Auburn in those years past. It sh- like this year, if Tennessee goes 11-1, and one, Georgia goes 11-1, and one, it should be Tennessee and Georgia, not Tennessee versus Alabama because Tennessee beat Alabama. That's stupid. It's I'm, dumb. And but it's that's, things like that's, – That's where, man, I go back to like the – NCAA is, is a dying organization. Yeah, you got to switch like, it up. It's on, it's on life support for what they – how they've done things and – um stolen essentially from players with revenue and stuff like that. And they figured out, mm-hmm. Oh, Oh crap. We can't do this anymore. Now it there, there'll be changes in the next, you know, eight to nine, 10 years where the NCAA might cease to exist, but football, obviously sports, no, but the organization may cease to exist at some point. I hope so. Lord willing. <laughs> that's, that's the dream. Uh, all right. Well, any any other thoughts on the the game today or the playoff or anything, Crump? Uh, before we head out, no. I mean, you know, kind of touched on what we talked about earlier. The game went as we expected it to. We we did what we were supposed to do. Played how we were supposed to have played. Got our starters out before halftime. Um. And you know, now we just got to take care of our business. If we, it like we can talk about it because we're supposed to and we have fun doing it. But inside that building, if they take it one game at a time, one day at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time, we have a legitimate chance to play and beat everybody in the country this year, which is so fun to finally say again. Um, but you got to do it. Still got to play football. That, like, you know, the high school I coach at, like we tell our kids, every win you get, the target on your back gets bigger. We've got to prove that we can do the Nick Saban model and pretty much say F you target on our back. We don't care how big you are. We're that good. And I think we have the staff that can do that. I do. That can get the kids to think that way and go about our business that way. So all that being said, as long as we do what we're supposed to do, we should be in the playoff. But yeah. the, the- you can't overlook the, the scariest game from here on out, including Georgia, is Kentucky. Because they are the one team that can play ball control. If they want, they can they can play ball control. Like I said, team I coach I coach for here in North Carolina. We had a game last night, twelve minute quarters. They got the ball first. You know how much time was on the clock when we got the ball? Two minutes left in the first quarter. Oof! Because they know we were a very high powered offense and we scored a lot of points. They ran the ball and and they out of the forty second play clock, they took thirty seven seconds. They didn't call play until nine seconds. Mm. If I'm Kentucky, that's what I would do. Yeah. That's your best chance at beating Tennessee because they outman you everywhere else. So that that's the reason why they're the scariest to me from here on out. I think they will. And and hopefully the ideal scenario there is that Kentucky is playing from behind and really their ball control just turns into a running clock for Tennessee. That's kind of what yes. happened 
against like LSU, you you got up, and then their long drives just became in in favor of you. Yeah, yeah. And you th- that's the, that's the way you beat teams that are not built to go super fast. And I'm not saying Kentucky can't do a two minute offense, but they're not built to come from 14 or 21 behind without having said team give them a pick six or a fumble for a touchdown or something like that, some dumb turnover. Um, Because if we just play our game and play our pace, we'll wear them out just like we always do. Right. That's just what we normally do. Um, And, and go about our business. You know, like you've said, third, what is it? 37 out of 40 minutes. I will go to my grave. Kentucky is Kentucky to me. It's just what it is. Kentucky is Kentucky. Even if, you know, even if you beat us two or three straight years, you're still Kentucky. It's, it's 37 out of freaking 40, man. Like, hey, what? that's, what that's how my mind works because that's, that's what was ingrained in us. Well, and they and they think about it that way also. Like how how it feels like at this point with Florida, like it almost feels impossible to win in the swamp because it's just been so long. I mean, how how does it not just feel impossible to win in Neyland Stadium for Kentucky yeah. at this point? Like, and so you have that mental edge on them already. And and you know, Stoops has been the coach this whole time. He has a horrible record against Tennessee. Like, it's just go take it. Just go take what's yours. Yep. Uh, and so that's it, I think. For this. Uh, edition of the Big Orange Game Day Post Game Reaction Show. Charlie Burris, former Vols quarterback, Jonathan Crompton. This was another awesome one. Um, I think we'll we'll have a little more uh, high energy and interaction yeah. next week, just naturally by the the nature of the the matchup. Well, the oh, and it's gonna be Halloween game. weekend. A Halloween weekend night yeah. game. But yeah, it'll be yeah, fun. It should be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be great. We'll see everybody there. Tune into the Big Orange Podcast Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, wherever you may be watching this, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever. Uh, me and Zach Reagan will be here discussing the Kentucky game also. So tune in there and follow A to Z Sports wherever you, you want to, all over social media, and check them out. Uh, that is it. Thanks again to everybody for watching. It's been awesome, and we'll talk to you all next week. Have a good week, guys.